Welcome everyone to the Moneyball series here on the Cult of Manager. Now for those of you that don't know what Moneyball is, I'm a baseball fan so I came across the Moneyball uh, system as it were many years ago and it was made famous in the film Moneyball that starred Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill. So in baseball there is a sort of uh, salary cap as they call it over there but there's a thing called luxury tax so in reality, you can pretty much spend what you want. There's a little bit of like a punishment where it costs you a load more. Like it would, they'd almost tax you if you want. If you had, if you spent over the the limit for your team, you then have to spend I don't know, like to pay somebody a hundred thousand pounds or dollars, you then have to spend two hundred thousand because fifty percent of it is just being taxed out right where it wasn't before the the salary cap limit. That's sort of how baseball used to work with it. So even though there's technically a cap, there isn't really. So basically, there was there was one team in baseball that decided that, look, we can't compete with these big teams in terms of like spending money and all that kind of stuff, right? So, so what can we do? And they're out to lose one of their star players, or a couple of them actually, and they decided that, right, we need to do something different. And the film Moneyball is based around the the general manager called Billy Bean, who ends up, he ends up getting in contact with a guy who's just stats, you know, mad, and is all about the stats within baseball. And this is going back quite a few years, way before what we would consider to be normal now. And they end up, long story short, purchasing players based purely on stats, like just purely based on stats. Now, the reason that worked in baseball is there aren't too many variables in baseball, right? You have one pitcher and one batter and everybody else is stationary at that point. You can still base it, but pretty much everybody else is stationary, right? And you've got the fielders. The field can only be really so many variables. The fields are normally pretty much uh, quite similar. So it really comes down to the pitcher and the hitter. And there's there's a lot of things that, that can get reduced down. Whereas in football, you've got 22 people on the pitch at one time all moving around and you know you're you're playing both sides of the ball you're in position and you're out of possession and there's transition whereas some of the other sports they have over there including baseball you're only playing one side of the ball at one time right you're not hitting and then pitching you know in the same time it's always one inning than the other so they can get on the variables so they're able to build a team based purely on stats and they got very very close to winning the world series a few times so they went from like being the lowest spending team and one of the worst teams to one of the best doing this method and they nearly won it like i said a few times then the Boston Red Sox, who are owned by Liverpool's current owners, they then ended up basically purchasing or getting at least the information of how they were purchasing these players, and they ended up winning this their um, and they ended up winning their World Series eventually after they adopted this policy. So it was a big thing in baseball. Then when these owners came in and bought Liverpool, John W. Henry and his his group of people that own the Red Sox, they bought Liverpool. I knew straight away they were going to try and put this put this in because I, I followed it in baseball. Right, I'd seen it in baseball. And if anybody had seen the film, they would they'd have known it was coming. To be fair, as well. I think at the start, they just based it too literally on things like in the Premier League, historically at that point, because it was what, 2010. So if you think only 10 years before that was the year 2000. So it was still quite a lot of data that could have been a bit skewed. Because like if you look to in the year 2000, the amount of teams that would have played a flat 4-4-2 and crosses in the box, people like, you know, Fowler, Owen, Shearer, Cole, just, you know, all these players were players that were elite strikers. And... Aerial football was such a big thing, so crosses into the box, aerial challenges were quite prominent. So what they looked at was who creates the most chances in the Premier League from wide areas, Stuart Downing, who who attacks the ball and wins the most headers in the box, Andy Carroll. It was, I'm not saying it was literally that simple, but those were the kind of things they were looking at and not factoring in, I think, a lot of other layers to it. And Liverpool have much more evolved now into a brilliant strategy for chances, as we've seen. But at the time, it was definitely flaws. So that's... In essence, Moneyball was looking at literally stats. Now, like I just mentioned, football is different. Football is variable. You play both sides of sport at the same time. You can't just purely look at stats. Stats can be a great indicator, but there has to be something else added to it as well, as most stats people will tell you. So the reason why I mentioned Billy Bean and the way that his his team, the Oakland A's, ended up doing well and it then gets sold to the Red Sox, who went to Liverpool. The reason I mentioned all of this was, one, to explain what Moneyball was, but second of all, Billy being the guy that originally started all of this, or was the general manager, he wasn't the, the stats guy, but he was the person that started it all. The reason I mentioned that is Billy Bean himself ended up in a consortium to buy Aussie Football Club. So Barnsley are owned by a consortium of internationals. It's not just Americans, but they're but within it, Billy Bean was involved. So they obviously were taking their stats-based approach to Barnsley. But that's why then, as you can see right here, we're going to do it with Barnsley because it's the team uh, that, that it just seems the most fitting to do it with. Now, this is an idea I've had for a long time with Football Manager and I've just never really got around to doing it. I've only had the channel for a year um, and it's something that I, I wanted to show and bring to other people. One to, to sort of spread the word of what Moneyball was. What we are going to do is we are going to pretty much do Moneyball though with Barnsley. We are going to look at stats to buy players and that is it. We are only going to look at stats. Now how we do that in FM when we have so many other things to look at. The first thing I think is important, we're going to remove 
remove attributes when we buy players. I'll show you how to do that in a second without using a skin, just to, it's a quite a simple way to do it in the preferences actually. But we're not gonna be able to see any of the attributes of the players. We're gonna purely rely on looking at their stats from their, from their club and their league that they're playing in. And then the scouts that we send will give us like their pros and cons of the player that we can see and they'll give them their star ability. So we're relying purely on the scouts, which is a big risk for manager and basic the stats that they that they have. And that's pretty much what you'd expect in real life. You know, you're not always going to get it right. You might get it badly wrong a few times, but you never know. So that's how we're going to do it. That's how the save sort of going to go. Now, how I'm going to do that. So you go to the preferences here. So click preferences. And you type skin. You can just put skin and C. So customize skin color, you click here. Then what you do, see this bit here where it says air, you want to turn all of these, all of these must go to zero, right? So we go to zero for all of those. You click confirm. And then as you can see here, we've got one of our youngsters here, one of our players in our under 23s. It blocks out their attributes. You can't actually see anything at all with their attributes. So, so we will never know whether we've actually bought enough strength and depth for positions because we don't know how good they're going to be. So to search for players, this is how it's going to work. So we're going to go here and go straight to stats for players and club. And as you can see here, there's just a load of players here that have got a bunch of stats for the leagues they're playing in. So we've loaded quite a few leagues for this game, for this aid, because you need to have the leagues loaded to have like the better stats, the more accurate stats. So we've had to load quite a few leagues. So the only leagues we can see at the moment are the leagues that are not basically in Europe. So all these players here play in either the, um, in Scandinavia or South America. And we can see a few stats here, but nothing too, no, nothing too important. You know, appearances, goals, assists, passing. Well, important, but like nothing in depth really, is it? If I wanted to like look more in depth at the stats, what you do here is you go to like here for somewhere in the list here. You just right click, we go insert column, stats chalkboards. And let's say we wanted to go to, or let's see, um, I don't know. Passes, attempts per 90 minutes, something like that. So there you go. So let's say we're looking for um, a, a, a deep line playmaker that gets a lot of passes, but then also completes a lot of them. So we might then look at the most passes attempts per 90 minutes, but then also we're looking at the accuracy. So you can see here, so we can see this Brian Miranda here, he attempts 72 passes a match. But he has a 97% pass accuracy, but he's only played two matches. So this is where it gets really important to contextualize your stats, right? Got a few players there that haven't played too many matches. So you start getting down here. Now we've got a few more players that have played a few few more games here. Like this guy here now, he's got quite a few games under his belt. So that maybe is a better um, sample size for the stats. And as you can see, we can fully expect that because we've just started the save and there's hardly anybody playing any matches at the moment around the world, that we're not going to have much to go off of right now. But when we get to January and everybody's halfway through their season or finish their season, we're going to be able to see the stats in loads more detail, loads more number of stats, and we're going to have a lot more of a, an opportunity to, to sign players and, and get a bigger picture of what we're doing. Now, really important if you're doing this with me back at home as well, you have to make sure that after, at the end of every season, you make sure you create a separate save file at the last game of the season, just save it and just save it as like Barnsley first season, whatever it is. The reason is we're going to have to do all of our business pretty much up before June the 23rd. So at the end of this season, when it gets to June 23rd, we have to do all of our business before that day. The reason is that's the day where the European League switch over to the new season. So all the stats that you have will be gone from the search, from the search bar. So we have to, at the very least, shortlist all of our players before that day to know who we're going to go for. And if we don't, we're going to lose the opportunity to get them or to at least see the stats. The only way to save yourself from that issue is if you save your game at the end of every season, you can then load up your old save file just to check the stats and go back. That's going to be your only chance of redeeming yourself if you do it this way. I think what I'd probably do eventually is I'd end up like saving a load of these customs for like per position. So we'll do this in a future episode. Once we've settled on the tactic and we're going to buy players into that tactic, we can then set up searches for specific positions and have the right stats for what we're going to look for. So I think that's the long term aim. And I don't know how long this is going to take. This could be quite a long term save because obviously our success rate is going to, going to be a lot lower than other saves we've done. And if I was just playing as Barnsley normally, right? Because it's going to take us a long time to think to get the right players. It could, I honestly don't know how this is going to go. I've, I've never done this before. I've always wanted to do this, but I've never actually got around to doing it. So I have no idea how it's going to go. I have an idea roughly in my head of what formation I'm going to play and what system. And then we'll look to buy players into that. Like, we're going to be pretty much stuck with the original squad for the first transfer window because the only players that are available are probably going to be Scandinavian players. And if they don't get a work permit, then we've pretty much got what we've got. So... That's going to be going to be an interesting one. In terms of staff, I think we're going to purely try and get coaches in based on their... We won't look at their stats, attributes, same as the players. We'll look purely just at their playing style and see if it matches with us and our formation. And we'll probably look at their personality as well, because I think that if you had like a, an interview with some coaches, 
probably get a chance for them to explain to you their playing philosophy so you'll know what their formation, their formation is, you'll know what their playing style is, and you can probably get a good feel of their personality. I mean, that's not always a guarantee, but we're going to do it for that purpose. We'll look at those two things first, personality last, and see who we can get into match our philosophy at the club. And like I said, we'll go into that probably in the next episode because I just wanted to sort of bring you the idea for the save. And I hope people are excited about this. I'm really excited about this. And I'm really interested to see what happens and how it goes. As you can see, I've not even clicked continue yet. I have no idea how it's going to go. And I'm going to upload this video straight away because I want to see... I want to win or fail with this, you know? I want to see how this goes. I've not been sacked yet on the channel. So there's always a first for that. We were very close with one of the episodes on the, the Munich save, which is now a Twitch stream save. But yeah, that's going to do the episode. That's going to be our introductory episode of what Moneyball is, how the save's going to look, the rules for the save. Well, not really rules, but, you know, how the save's going to be played. Um, and hopefully you're excited about it. And in the next episode, we'll go through all the players that we're going to try and sign, the players we're going to let go, and all that sort of fun stuff. Before we even get into the players, though, I'll show you first the tactic we're going to use so we know what we're sort of buying into. Obviously, the tactic could change, but that's pretty much what we're going to look at. And yeah, we're going to go through that, go through our playing philosophy, go through through our sort of like DNA of our club, what we're going to try and strive to be, and bring in the players and coaches to fit that. And then basically apply a scientific approach to, to football and football manager. Thank you very much for watching. If you are excited about this kind of like, you know, type of series, please let me know down below and also tell other people because I'm really excited about this. I want this series to do well because it's going to be a real interesting one. I have no idea how it's going to go. I don't know if anybody else has done this either. I've not really actually didn't even look. I didn't check because I didn't, even if it was there, I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to see what anybody else did or how they did it. I just thought of this in my head of how I wanted to do it. So we'll see how this goes. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. Spread the word and I'll see you next time.